Um, so Gary, there's a series of sheds here. There's the original development, I suppose, above where maybe the farm was a few years back. Yeah, that's What great. was there originally? So the, whenever we put in the rotary in this farm, it, it was eight years ago in December. Um, basically, at the front end, there was a 2550 a herringbone or parallel parlour with sequential baling um, and all the cows were up there and then as we as these grew we've you know it's a shed after a shed these are all 300 cow buildings yeah and they uh, basically once they got to a point where the, the parallel couldn't cope with the amount of cows then we built the rotary at the, f the other end right and then basically kept going moving up in cow numbers okay so we have three sheds here each with 300 cows that's correct and i suppose maybe to discuss here the movement of cows from the sheds to the rotary and what we see here to explain is yeah so w I, a concept that they whenever i was in the, in the states was whenever you're walking to the rotary the narrowest point should be the passage where the cow where the cow comes out of and then it should be wider the whole way to the collecting yard so you can see here passage is 10 feet this section we're in is around 20 feet and then the collecting yard is a 50 foot collecting yard wide so the cows are always funneling out the way walking to the rotary it's just to give them more time whenever you're bringing 300 cows at a time you need space for them to move um, yes. and then on the return side there is no way uh, there is no crossing over cows the cows don't have to stop to cross over in a path so you can see on this the other side is a smaller area for them walking back but again it has the same principle that you're starting off on the uh, on the exit walking the way down single file or two cows could pass each other there and it'll get wi the widest point is whenever they're back in the in their cubicle house then yeah and they can return at points then they can return at points so yeah. the gates you can see here can all swing right across and they they can open up the build the, the sheds then to so the, let them in so the cows from the forward stand i presume are milked first yes and Brought, brought, brought then forward. So yeah. at the start, uh, at the start, the fresh cows will be milked first on the rotary, and at the last, the the hospital pen will be the the last one, and then everything in between will just be traffic lights, just keep emptying out sheds then as far as to to be milked. So as we were you were saying earlier, there's a lot of thought put into the movement of cows and um, the whole logistics. Logistics is an issue, I suppose, not to be taken for granted in terms of moving large numbers of cows. I suppose the potential of bringing the cows too early or too late into a rotary and losing efficiency. So I suppose the farmer here came up with a solution for that. Yeah, um, we, no, it, we we implemented the solution, but it was a it was a consultant that was brought in for for that to to talk through. But we basically we we thought we could save around 15 minutes um, per group of standing time by putting in a traffic light system. So basically, they were fine because there was no set definition of when to bring cows to the rotary um, they were bringing them either too early or too late predominantly too early so that the rotary wasn't doing anything um, but what we have done is actually put up a traffic light system so when the backing gate gets to a certain point of putting cows through the green light comes on and then the guys know to bring the next pen of cows up and that'll just be as that pen is in the collecting yard the last of the cows of the previous group will be going on to the rotary right. so they're they're there's a good view back basically from here which is quite a distance back yeah and they're opening the shed once they see the green light exactly yeah. it's simple you know okay. very you know simple to use easy easy and visual i know i've been to some farms where they're using walkie talkies and things with that there's no it, it, it you know it's 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 the same every time it happens at the same point every time yeah and a camera up there as well i presume to for the operator to have a look back as well yeah a camera camera system all around the farm just to make sure you know as i said cow welfare is utmost important if they see that there's a cow down each cow has um they have a pedometers on them on the legs so for activity but for also cow health um and then if they do see a cow that is low in health they can zoom in on that cow in their pen if they need to there's there's, yeah. there's cameras throughout the whole farm so gary we're in the middle of uh i suppose we have the rotary in the collecting yard here on our left and we have uh, a large cubicle shed and calving area here on the right um, could you explain what's going on down here? Rotary and Collecting Yard was built first and then this shed was built after. Um, it holds 500 cows. Um, it's split into two parts as far as we have the fresh cows in one side and then we have the cows coming up the cabin in the, in the other side. And There's someone here 24 hours a day and whenever we go into the cabin facilities you can see the way it's, the way it's set out. So in a farm like this how many cows are calving a day? Oh, on average, usually around five. Uh, it can be up, it can be lower. It just yeah. depends on where they are, but it's usually pretty consistent. Okay.
So are we looking at an office area here first? Yeah, it, it, small office, but it's it's to do with totally the cabin, the cabin area as such. So like, you know, you have all the all the tools you need. There's a water heater in there for, for having some hot water for the calves in each pens. And they, you know, they need the tools there as well for disinfecting, like each pen gets cleaned out after every, every okay. calf that's been yeah. born. Okay, so you were, I suppose, the benefit of calving a small number of cows every day, relatively speaking, is the fact that you, it's limited the, the area you need in terms of a straw pen. Yeah, we do, you don't need a massive where we're not, you know, calving, you know, sort of 30 cows at a time. You know, it's a, it can be a more defined area, a little bit smaller. But as you can see here, we have the straw, straw pen, one cow at the minute. This must be close to going. And then a, on the left here, then we, whenever they drop calves, so they move them from the straw pens into the calving pen. Once the cow's, calf's been born, um, then it moves back into the straw pen for a little while. Okay, you were saying it's a just in time, is it? Is it just in time or drop calving? So like the calves, like, like the cows are not in these pens, you know, for hours and hours. It's 10, 15 minutes whenever they calve and then back into the straw pen again. Okay, yeah. So did, they're really in the cubicle. It's up to the right up to the to point. So like yeah, even moving into the straw pen, they're they're in cubicles right up to the time that they're starting to show that they're they're going to calf. Right. So feeding wise, feeding on the outside. Yep. Feed feed ba uh, feed barrier totally down both sides of the building um, and we have a uh, gale breaks both sides as well it can get quite windy where we're at here so gale breaks as well for the, the cows keep them cool in the summer time and yeah. warm in the winter time so, so pastures are wide yeah very wide uh, you know as i said one of the things whenever we design this you're, you know the sh shed could you could put 500 cubicles for dairy cows into here so like you know cow traffic you're moving cows around at, at that sort of scale you need nice wide passages yeah uh, and a and plenty of gates, like one person would run this area down here. The, the gates are well set up. Yeah, gates are well set up. Uh, it's easy. It's easy to walk around. It's easy to walk around. It. You'll find as well drinking troughs everywhere. You have the. You have as well the Bumara cow brushes just for the for the cows as well. Keep them comfortable. Rope scrapers. Yeah, rope scrapers again. Um, you know, you could look at hydraulic. You could look at robotics um, because they're straight passages and they're so long, in all honesty, the only one that really makes sense is rope scrapers to go up and down them, just yeah. because of the length that's involved. Yeah, okay. So, and your, I suppose, those side sheets there, the windbreakers, they're yeah. adjustable by the looks of it too? Yeah, they're to totally, adjust totally adjustable gale breakers, so they, um, they can move them up or down. Um, I'm not sure if it's on an automatic system as far as to adjust with temperature, but you know, as I said, there is, there's controls at the back of the building that you can, we can manually put them up and down on it. Yeah, and three columns of headlocking barriers here then? Yes, yeah, just with a gauge, said, you can isolate if you want. Isolate cows if you're wanting to check them, especially with these being the, the cows that are in calf, or, or about to calf, sorry, um, that you can bring them into there if you want to do any checks on them. But you'll see around this farm, as far as there'll be headlock and yokes everywhere diff in different areas, it's just easier to lock up lots of cows rather than try to bring yeah. them into a traditional long crush. Yes. Very nice. So, Gary, we're at the, the feeding area here. It's uh, it's a fully indoor system, so there's a lot of feed being prepared. Um, a lot of feed, you can see, well, you know, it's, it's TMR as far as, uh, and there's a TMR going pretty much 24 hours a day here. We're using silage um, and we're using some byproduct and then straights as well um, for, the, for, the, for the feed. Um, and I said the customer does all, all, does all their own silage work. They don't, they, they don't contract it out. They have their own self-propelled and they keep it all you keep it all in house yeah so two two i suppose uh, stores for straights yeah um there there he's protein sources possibly there yeah they, you know as i said different areas different products that they can mix in with it i suppose that's the that is the beauty of having a tmr and the flexibility that it gives you as, as well because we've talked about that we're running in so many different groups here we can feed different groups different rations in, and we can do it all do it all in one location yes